Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. This one is for back to school. I'm gonna be sharing breakfast ideas, lunch ideas, dinner ideas, freezer meals, snack ideas. I got you covered for back to school prep to make your life a little bit easier once the chaos of back to school and sports and all that comes back into play. So this video is in collaboration with Kiwana over at Kiwana's Kitchen. I just know you guys will love her channel. As you can see, she shares what's for dinner videos, she shares recipe videos and grocery hauls. All you, I know all of you guys love that kind of stuff. So make sure you go check out her meal prep video, show her some love, leave her a comment, let her know that I sent you, and subscribe to our channel, do all the things. So let's get into this meal prep video because it's a long one. All right, so we're gonna be making some sausage and white bean soup. We're gonna be prepping some blueberries, some smoothie bananas, some grapes, and some little fruit and veggie containers with dip or hummus. We're gonna be making some little meal prep containers with chicken and rice and veggies, some more grapes, and these little parfaits for breakfast. We're gonna be prepping some oranges, some zucchini muffins, some sauce for dinner, some chicken pot pies, some taco boats for lunches, some meatball sandwich um, like meal kits, some taco meal kits, pepperoni pizza meal kits. Um, this is some more zucchini bread and then some macaroni and cheese cups and some pepperoni bagel bites. All right, so the first thing I like to do is always make a list. The meal planner that I use is by Carrie L. I have a whole video on this meal planner and explaining it, but there's like a whole list pad in the back which I really love so I'm just gonna make a list of everything that I want to make today because without this list I would literally lose my sanity and I actually use it so I will go back and check off what I made what I need to do next etc etc So first I got started with the dinners because they took the longest to make. I needed to put some things in the crock pot and stuff like that. So I'm getting started by first browning some, browning some ground beef with some taco seasoning. And then I'm going to be making a taco kit. So I'm writing taco kit on the front. I'm including soft shells, cheese, and meat, and then the date. And don't worry about me using these Ziploc bags. Like the outer shell bags, I will totally reuse. Like these are expensive, guys. You think I'm going to just waste them? I don't think so. So I'm putting my tortilla shells inside the big bag. And then I'm going to include my little bag of meat that I had cooled down and everything. And then I'm going to include a bag of taco cheese. And then I'm just going to squeeze as much air as I possibly can out and zip lock it tight. And then it's all good to go in the freezer, ready to go for dinner. Right, next I'm going to get started on a huge crock pot full of sauce so in the sauce I'm going to have meatballs and sausage so to make my meatballs I'm just adding some Italian breadcrumbs some red pepper flakes some parsley some garlic powder some minced onion and some oregano and some minced garlic olive oil and a splash of milk and two eggs. And I'm just gonna combine that really, really well and form that into meatballs. And then I just like to fry the outside a little bit, get it brown, and then throw it in the crock pot and let it finish cooking in there. Alright, so I already have my Italian sausage in there. I'm adding my meatballs and I will also add 
some green pepper and some onion and then I will add two giant jars of ragu sauce just plain traditional ragu and then one jar of water and then I also like to add I had some veggies in the fridge so whatever veggies like are gonna go bad soon I like to add to my sauce and then I will blend them up later and you will literally never know and it's a good way to get veggies in so I'm adding some carrots broccoli and spinach this time and they will just cook down in your sauce and then you can either use an immersion blender or I will use my Nutribullet and just blend it up into the sauce I like to cook my sauce for as long as possible, at least six hours to eight hours, as long as you possibly can. Um, right now I'm just removing all the veggies like the carrots and the broccoli. The spinach pretty much cooked down, but the carrots and the broccoli need blended up. So I'm just sticking it in my neutral bullet blender and then I'm going to let it cool down and then blend it up and add it back to my sauce. Okay, and then I was able to make two gallon size bags of sauce with sausage and meatballs for like a pasta night to put in the freezer. And then I'm making one bag for meatballs. So I'm making a meatball kit, meatball sandwich kit for that. So I'm just writing meatball sandwiches on there. I'm sticking my meatballs with sauce in my bag and I'm adding my rolls as well as some provolone cheese. So it's an entire kit ready to go for a dinner. And with the rest of the sauce, I'm going to put into little bags for a pizza kit. So I'm just writing pizza kit on there. I'm including mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, pizza dough, and sauce. So I get these frozen pizza doughs at Walmart. They are frozen. You usually have to ask for frozen ones at like the deli. They keep the frozen ones in the back. And then they put them out in the front and then they kind of defrost and are ready to use for you guys to buy. Then I'm adding my pizza sauce that I made in my crock pot as well as a bag of mozzarella cheese and then little containers of pepperoni. All right, next we're gonna be making chicken pot pie. I don't usually make chicken pot pie like this. I'm gonna have my grandmom's recipe for chicken pot pie linked down below. She is Pennsylvania Dutch and we've never ate it like this before, like baked. So I will link the recipe that I followed to make this down below because I've never made this before and I've actually never had like a baked chicken pot pie before. So, and still haven't because this is sitting in my freezer. So I don't know how this is gonna be or how it tastes, but the reviews on Pinterest are really good for this recipe. So I followed it to a T and hopefully it is good. And these are really easy to make. So I will probably make them again. I like the idea of making little mini chicken pot pies. I think they're really cute and easy for the kids to heat up. So I used a rotisserie chicken, made it really, really easy, added, I think entirely too much peas. Let me know, did I add too much peas? Luckily my kids love peas and they will be happy about this. My kids are crazy, but they love peas. We all love peas, so they will eat this. I just used pre-made pie crust from Walmart and added it to my pie pan and Adding a little slit to the top, I'm adding some tin foil on there and going in the freezer just like this and it'll be ready to go to bake up. All 
All right, so for lunches, I made these for the summer using these old El Paso, old El Paso soft tortilla shell boat thingies. I, can, I found them at Walmart, and the kids love these during the summer. So I'm just adding the rest of that taco meat right to these tortilla shells, and then sprinkling some cheese on top. And then you're going to want to flash freeze these. So I just put them on like a cookie sheet and suck them in the freezer like that until they were frozen. And then you can stick them in a Ziploc bag so they don't get like stuck together or anything and they will like stay separated so I'm just labeling them and then sticking them in the bag so that the kids can pull them out I got a lot of questions on how they eat them so we I microwave them and then the kids can put lettuce on them tomato sour cream salsa and they just pick them up and kind of like squeeze them together like they're folding a pizza in half and just took a bite like that like they're eating a taco all right, so the next one isn't really for the kids, but it's for me and my husband, but we're busy too, so we need to eat as well. So I'm just browning up some Italian sausage and adding some onions and carrot and celery, and then just gonna brown this up with the meat until the veggies get tender. And then I'm gonna add a whole can of crushed tomatoes and then a can of diced tomatoes and then a can of white and then a can of white beans and then two cartons of chicken broth now I was cutting it really really close to my chicken broth so I didn't quite add all of the second carton because I am going to be adding my noodles to this so you don't want to overflow that's all so once you are boiling, you can add your noodles. I like to use this Ditalini pasta, but you can use whatever. I use elbow noodles a lot because usually my store is out of this pasta, especially Walmart. I had to find it at ShopRite this time, but um, use whatever you like. And this is what it looks like after the noodles become tender. It thickens up a lot. You can thin it out if you want with some more chicken broth or water or whatever, but my husband really likes it thick like this. and. Yeah, that's it. I'm just going to be using these food storage containers that I grabbed at Walmart. Um, if you watched my Clean With Me video, don't judge me. I did buy more. But I needed something like for soup for the freezer and this is what I got. So I added my soup to these guys and they're going to go in the freezer after they cool down. And I have one little one here for my husband because he wanted it right now. And then we're going to get started on some pepperoni and cheese bagels for the freezer these were a big hit over the summer as well so I'm just adding some provolone cheese onto some mini bagels with some pepperoni slices now to heat these up I like to put them in the air fryer um, right from frozen into the air fryer on a lower temp so they don't burn before they defrost and then I wrap them in tin foil and then they stay warm and just amazing until lunchtime next I'm making some hidden veggie mac and cheese cups so I'm just making my mac and cheese like I always do I made it a million times on my channel just start with some butter and flour you make a roux add your milk let it become thick and then the only difference here is I'm adding some veggies so I use this bag of frozen mixed veggies I really wanted to stick with orange and white like cauliflower and carrots sweet potato would work just anything that wouldn't alter the color of the mac and cheese so my kids wouldn't know I did sneak in a few broccoli and it didn't like affect the color at all so I just let these defrost and then I blended it with a little bit of the pasta water from the noodles when I was boiling the noodles blended it in my neutral bullet added it to the milk and along with the cheese and then I'm adding my noodles along into that cheese sauce now does it affect the taste of it I tasted it knowing that there was veggies in it and I felt like it had a sweeter flavor from the carrots um, my husband tasted them and I did not tell him whatsoever and he had no idea the kids had no idea and they didn't say a word so I don't think your kids or her husband or anybody would know any different um, I only thought there was a taste difference because I knew and I was looking for it and I just felt like it tasted sweeter from the carrots 
All right, I decided to bake these in little muffin tins. So I'm just spraying them really well so they don't stick and then putting them in the muffin tins and then I'm topping them with some Italian breadcrumbs as well as some Parmesan cheese. Now I recommend to get these out after they bake. You let them cool and then I suck them in the freezer, let them become frozen and then use like a butter knife to pop them out of the muffin tin. That works best for me because pulling them out while they were hot, they broke apart. Even if they were just cool, they broke apart. So letting them become frozen and then popping them out works best for me. Alright, so these guys here are going to be for me and my husband as well. So I found these chicken skewers at BJ's and I got the ones with the chili Thai, Thai chili sauce that comes with it. I'm going to be using a deluxe stir fry frozen veggies as well as some white rice. You can use brown rice, quinoa, whatever you want. And my, of course my camera didn't record any of this but it's pretty self-explanatory. I just put the skewers in the big compartment. I put the rice in one, the veggies in another, and then topped it with some sauce. And these meal prep containers are from Walmart. I can link them down below. They also have a bunch on Amazon. I think I have some in my Amazon store. They're also linked down below. They're amazing. They freeze really well. No freezer burn whatsoever. And lastly, we're going to do some snacks. So I'm not going to like walk you through all this process. I clean my fruits and veggies all in vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar today, peeling some grapes letting the veggies or the fruits soak, you know, doing the thing. I'm doing the strawberries in my little Sistema containers here with some chocolate hummus on the side. My kids really like this. They like it with the strawberries on the side. And then I do have a little one. I have a two-year-old, so she needs her own grapes. So I cut up some grapes for her and put it in a container so she has her cut-up grapes for safety. And we also got oranges, peaches, and plums this time. So I am washing all those in the apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar as well so I am washing the outside of the oranges because I'm slicing them like this and you know kids they like to put like the entire orange in their mouth they like to make smiles with it and everything so I wanted to make sure the outside of the orange was clean as well I do this with my lemons and limes too because I always just throw the entire lemon right into the, my water and you know the outside of the peel is always touching the entire world so you want to make sure that you, the outside of your peel is clean if you're going to be using it or touching it with your mouth or your food and lastly for snacks I am prepping up some veggies so I just have some cucumber celery broccoli and green peppers and then I have some red pepper hummus that I'm gonna put on the side with that and also like some store-bought snacks that we like to keep on hand are some yogurt tubes. We like to keep um, like string cheese, nuts, um, Doritos. <laughs> Don't worry, my kids eat their fair share of junk food as well. But they like to balance it out with the healthy food too. So this is just the stuff that I had to prep myself. Alright, and lastly for breakfast, I'm just getting some bananas frozen for some smoothies. My son likes to drink the Carnation Breakfast Essentials and he'll blend up a banana and some peanut butter and then some of the chocolate milk stuff. So I'm just slicing the bananas and laying them out flat on a baking sheet and then freezing them this way that they're flash frozen, like I mentioned a million times, and then they won't stick together. So he can just like break off a few and throw them into the blender and blend up a few instead of a whole banana. All right, next I'll be making some parfaits to go in the fridge. So there's a couple different options you can use for the granola on the top. So if you have a wide mouth mason jar like this one, they make the little small ones that are wide mouth. You can use like the Dole Fruit Cup containers and they fit. Now you can also flip them upside down or you can stick them inside the jar. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. 
Um, but this is the mason jar that I'm using, and I'm using the little side cups from Walmart. They're like the little plastic containers that come with the lids. And this is just to keep your granola separate from your yogurt. You can totally just put your granola on in the morning if you're not in a rush. But I just wanted to give you guys this option in case you are in a rush in the morning and you wanted to keep it all together. Or if you wanted to send your kid with something like this to school. Alright, I'm just using some vanilla yogurt and some frozen berries. This is going to taste totally like the McDonald's parfaits if you've ever had them. They're really, really good, but you can use whatever yogurt and whatever fruit that you like. I'm using this bare naked triple berry granola. It has little dried blueberries and strawberries in it. It is really good and it's like reduced sugar as well. And I'm just adding that to my little side cups. And then I'm gonna do two inside of the mason jar and then two on top just to show you like how it works. You just have to be really careful if you spill it or you're like not careful, you'll have granola all over. <laughs> Alright, if you watched my grocery haul from a couple weeks ago, you saw that I had like gigantic zucchinis and I needed to use them up so I'm making some zucchini bread and I found an amazing recipe on Pinterest that I'll link down below. The only difference that I made is I didn't use all white sugar, I used half white sugar and half brown sugar but this was so so good. My kids are like obsessed and want to eat them all. I had to put them in the freezer or they would be gone by, gone by now. So I made half muffins and then I made one loaf and I just have them all in the freezer. You can pop these out, put them in the microwave with some butter and they're just really great for breakfast or anything. And I did add chocolate chips to ours as well. Like you stand bright and light as I'm putting chocolate on. Like the best part about the whole freaking bread, you block out. Don't pout. It's okay. Is this enough chocolate? You're not gonna give me your opinion? No, <laughs> okay. All right, guys, and that is it for today's video. I hope it gave you some ideas to get your freezer and fridge stocked up for back to school. Make sure you guys go check out Kiwana's meal prep video. I'm sure you won't be disappointed, and don't forget to let her know that I sent you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. You can